So good morning. Welcome to another episode of Better Business, Better Life. I am here today with the Coco Vinny. And for those of you who are avid kind of entrepreneur followers like myself, you will have probably seen Coco Vinny on the Shark Tank and possibly also the Profit. So welcome, Coco Vinny. Lovely to have you. Thanks. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, my absolute pleasure. As I said to you before we came on the podcast, I've been a little bit of a, a fan from abroad, so I've been really keen to catch up with you and see what's going on. Um, so 2017 was the Shark Tank, wasn't it? That was when you first um, became... That was the the, the entree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but before yeah. that, you've had quite an interesting life. I didn't realise, but before, we'd like to give us a little bit of your story before um, the whole Coco Taps thing started. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been an entrepreneur since I was about 16. So a lot of different ventures. Um, the, the venture right before I started Coco Taps, I was in an internet gaming space. It was the uh, only free to pay, play legal internet poker site in the United States. And it was, it was an amazing adventure. I raised millions of dollars in capital and I just came to a brick wall, so to speak. Um, I guess I call it my quarter life crisis. And so that's when I just went kind of walk about and learned how to figure out what, what I really like for me, you know? Um, so that was, that was the main, hold on one sec. What's that? Sorry. There's like a noise back there. Anyway. Um, so, so that was like really the, the start of my kind of self-discovery on what, what I like, what's good for me. And I realized that three things that are the most important to me were um, whatever I did next, it had to be good for people, had to be good for the planet and it had to be fun. So those are my three like non-negotiables Yep. over the coconut. And that's how it all kind of start. And I'm going to ask a little more about that and how that all came about. But before that, would you mind sharing with our listeners a professional and a personal best in your life so far? Yes. So, uh, so far in my life, or just in the week? No, no, the whole life. Go for it. Go for gold. <laughs> okay, well, so I would say my personal best um, was there, there's there's a bunch, but there's there's some pivotal moments where you discover your power and who you are. And um, one of my personal bests was when I finished the Ironman. Uh, I did the, the half Ironman in, in Kona in Hawaii. That was a personal best for me. And as well as a full marathon um, for a big guy like myself, I'm, I'm six, five, you know, 300 pounds. And to do those kinds of events, those long distance events, those are big, you know, things that uh, teach you how you, you know, how you can do the impossible, so to speak. Yeah. And, and I'd say on a professional side, I think it's right now, you know, Coco Taps and, and discovering, you know, my true purpose and my, passion and and doing things like getting on a shark tank and and all these really amazing things that are happening so that's that's kind of my professional best i think it's a it's something that you know will carry on beyond you know me i think it's just yep. these really cool little things that i just i love it so Fantastic. And we were talking just before, and obviously you, know, you had the online gaming business and, and from the outside in, it probably would have like, you looked like you had everything, uh, but it really wasn't enough. So you decided to have that, that hard reset, I think you called it. And then you, yeah. um, you got, could you tell us how you came to, to discover or decide to develop Coco Taps? Yeah. So uh, like I said, I was doing um, some long distance event training, the, the Ironman and, and running and everything. And Everybody's saying, drink coconut water, drink coconut water. And I couldn't stomach it. I thought I hated coconuts because you drink this packaged water and it tastes just God awful. And so I was in a meeting one day and the people were from Indonesia and they brought these young Thai coconuts to the table. They didn't have this yet, but they, you know, they were, they were cracked open and I tasted, I was like, man, this is amazing. So every day after my workouts, I had a knife and a hammer. And I was just cracking open these coconuts, drinking them after my workouts and, Life was good, but two weeks after after this process, the knife I was using belonged to my stepdad, and I ended up breaking the knife and messing it up. And I didn't know it was a very prized possession of his, so I thought it was it was unmarked. I thought it was just a knife I could just go get. Well, he bought this knife in Germany twenty years ago. It was a big deal, and so it was it was a mess because my mom was like, "He's mad. You broke his knife." So that's where it started, and I was like, "Well, I can't be the only." 
Jamug sitting here, you know, breaking knives, almost cutting their fingers off on coconuts. So that's where it all started. And I said, you know, why don't we just take the top of a water bottle and somehow get it into a coconut? That was the, the idea. That's how it started. And then, of course, it grew significantly. And you were in all of the restaurants, all of the hotels. Um, you know, what, where, where, where can we find Cocoa Taps? I mean, in the U.S., it's about all over, isn't it? <laughs> It's um it's expanding. Um, we're opening up two more territories this this next year in 2022. Um, our international footprint's probably going to be another year after that. Yep. But we have a machine coming out that will go in all the bars and restaurants. It's a fully automated coconut cocktail machine. So you'll put the raw coconut in. It'll laser brand a logo. It'll drill a hole and it'll even inject alcohol or juice or whatever you want into your coconut. So it's a coconut cocktail making machine. So that's our expansion plan. That's going to, those are going to roll out everywhere. Yep. And um, yeah, we have some exciting things before we get to all that. I'll tell you about my, my dream mm-hmm. uh, that we're farms. Yep. We're going to be building coconut farms in Hawaii, Costa Rica, and even um, Puerto Rico to localize the coconut supply for the United States. So that's our big, big vision. A uh, 10 year target is to have 1 million coconut trees planted. Oh. That's just awesome. So tell me, um, I obviously know that you're you're using EOS in your business. And so when you talk about 10-year targets for me, it's like, oh, yeah, of course. So I expect that. <laughs> but not every business owner has those sort of 10-year targets, three-year plans, all those things. It's one of the beauties of EOS. It gives us a chance to kind of full plan. How did you come across EOS and why did you bring it into your business? Well, um, one of my friends and, and you know, clients of previous business, Shelly, um, Shelly Woodrow, and she, she just, um, you know, she'd been going through all this training and she told me about it. And I was like, wow, that sounds great, you know, and this was pre COVID. So we started and then COVID hit and it was just, a, I mean, it's probably one of the best things that hap- could have happened to us during COVID because it, it's still, we did everything remote, but it was still helpful to go through these processes and still, learn how to pivot and learn how to adapt and adjust to what's going on and adjust the targets and yep. make new ones, and, you know, all that stuff. Cause it would so, have hit you pretty hard, right? The COVID lockdowns over in the U S. Oh my gosh. I mean, we were shut down. We, we probably lost 18 months of revenue. It was just terrible. So yeah. it was, we had, it was kind of depressing to be honest because we had just landed some big deals with like big cruise lines, Royal Caribbean and things were starting to really get traction. And then, zero and that just you know we did our best we kept our whole team on on uh, payroll thank god we had a little bit of cash in the bank but i just let it dwindle out and down because i didn't want you know our team to suffer you know just because it is what it is so we were able to pivot a bit we did a little home delivery service stuff they you know we kind of got classified as an essential business because it was like food and beverage kind of thing so yep a little bit of that, but we really, it really gave us time to, to think about uh, not just being, you know, in the business, but getting on the business. And I, I, it expanded my horizons. I accelerated that tapomatic machine that I told you about. And yep. a lot of good things come out of it though. And so how do you think you would have coped if you hadn't been doing EOS at that time? Because my understanding is it does bring the team together. It gets you thinking about longer term, not just the day-to-day stuff, but yeah, give me your experience of it. Yeah. What's, what's neat is that a lot of people don't think long-term, but my problem is that I'm so macro a lot of times. I'm so big vision that it actually helped me bring it in. And so the 10 year target is actually like the 10 years, like the one year to me, because I was in an 80 year plan kind of thing. I was like, Oh, I got this, you know, I want this. And then it's like, Oh no, let's do it 10 years. And so it's, it's been great. Uh, it's, it's helped our team focus. It's helped me focus uh, measurements, KPIs, managements, you know, the, all that stuff is just really helpful. And it's um, it's helped wean out, you know, our, uh, core values having our core values has really helped us hire and fire very very efficiently so there's just some really great things that have come out of it tell me about the hiring and firing using the core values like that's i mean it's something we talk about all the time but how does it work in practice what's neat is that when we run our our culture so tied to our core values that we don't have to fire people if they're not in alignment 
they just go, they just self-select out. And when we hire our hiring, you know, we really iterate and make sure that they understand like what we're all about and what the, what the vibe is. And so it's been really nice. I, we haven't had to fire anybody. They'll quit. Awesome. So. We like that, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah fantastic. And, you know, and I, mean, I, I, I can, I know you're a big picture thinker. I can see from the, obviously your other experiences as well, but did you, did you know you were a visionary and did you have any understanding of what impact that can have on the business? Um. I guess I knew, but, but with this whole, you know, all the tests and all the different things that we do, uh, it's even, it's even giving me more insight into it. So, yeah. I mean, I'm a, what they call it a quick start. So I'm like a 10. I, I don't know. Well, I'm a nine. That's pretty good. But 10. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I, I was like, okay. So yeah. I mean, there's so, so yeah, you learn and learning about all this stuff. So yeah. And I, I'm assuming you've got a good integrator who balances you in the business. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, we've got Ashley and Coco Rob. They're, they're really good at keeping me, keeping me in check there. <laughs> Excellent. And so I'm just wondering, so, I mean, a lot of people, we, we're, I'm from New Zealand, as you know, and we are currently in day 71 of our lockdown of our, I think it's our fifth lockdown. And it's, it's getting frustrating because people don't quite know what's, what's happening. And for a lot of people, they that go, well, I don't want to start anything new because I don't know what's going to happen. I try and argue with them and say, well, actually, this is the, the perfect time to be looking at it. You must have gone through something like this when COVID hit, you know, did you have the old oh, bush, you put everything on hold or well, yeah, I mean, I I stepped on the gas hard. So I, I doubled down on our R&D, the development of the machine. Uh, I doubled down on fundraising. Yeah. I was actually reaching out to investors and raising money through the pandemic. So I was able to raise close to a million bucks during that time in the pandemic. I was just hammering the phones, hammering the phones. It's really hard to raise money, though, when you're having to be not in person for me. I'm a very, you know, relationship driven person. So I like, I'd like to, I like to build rapport and, and develop connection first before I ask people for money or anything like that, but it's challenging, but we were able to get some really good people on board. So, yeah. And so the things that you talked, you took to raise the money for and that you've actually brought in place, they were part of your plan for going forward. It just got brought forward or it gave you time to focus on it. What would, what does that look like for you? Yeah. It gave me time to focus. Um, and I just, I, I loved the, the, I mean, not having to do anything the day to day, so to speak, and then love working on the, the strategic part of it. So it just, it was, it was tough. I was, I was really grinding hard. And then also we went out to the streets, like there was a lockdown, but there was people out there that were just not, you know, we, we were, they started eating outside and doing things outdoors instead of being inside places. So we would go and set up our table out at the park where all those traffic was at. And we would sell coconuts out to the, to the, uh, to the crowd, you know, just kind of like guerrilla street marketing in a way that really worked. That really paid off big. We set up at the Las Vegas sign when yeah. traffic started to come back. And so that was good. Uh, but you know, we had to get real creative uh, it was it was challenging, I'll tell you. Yeah. I've, I've never had so many like start stops. I mean, we lost probably two million dollars in business because of the pandemic just shut down. Mm. How do you keep the team motivated through all that? <laughs> um, work, yep, and just just stay at it. You know, keep paying everybody. <laughs> I'm sure they're very grateful for that. Yeah. <laughs> They were. I mean, it's like they, we didn't have to do that, but they, they, you know, we, we did whatever they could see. I, I was doing everything I could to keep it together. So I think when you, when you go all in and you bet all in and you just keep working then they follow, you know, that keeps people motivated too. Fantastic. And of course you're off on a trip tomorrow. Is that right? Yeah. I'm excited. We're going to Costa Rica tomorrow. Yeah. Um, we are going to tour two different farms that we're going to potentially buy for, to start planting coconuts. Yep. Um, we're excited. We're going to, 
we're going to plant a lot of trees, a lot of coconut trees. Yeah, oh, that's fantastic. Can't wait to see that. So just from um, an overall point of view in terms of business, you know, we, we talk about this whole hockey stick growth. Well, I don't, but universities do and say this is the way that business grows and it's all beautiful and smooth. It's not like that in real life, is it? No, it's not at all. Um, you know, they say it takes 10 years to make an overnight success. Yeah. And I'm on year seven or eight right now in this venture. And honestly, it feels like we're just getting started. So um, I like to I like to look long game. Um, m- the biggest question that I hate being asked uh, by investors or by anybody is, what's your exit strategy? What's your exit strategy? And I'm like, that's such a stupid question to me because it's like, if you build something that you... Um, want and that you want to exist in the world you don't necessarily want to think about getting out of it it's like i just started i just came in why do i want to go think about getting out and i think if you're thinking about getting out all the time you lose a passion and you lose the love for the actual project you're just thinking like a, a flipper or like a trader or like a so there's a big difference between a long-term investor long-term shareholder versus a trader or somebody who's just trying to get in, get out, make some money, flip it out. So that that's um, one of the things that I I feel like in 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 my my life now that I've found something that I truly enjoy and I'm passionate about that I don't need to think about an exit. The eggs still come if I if somebody shows up with a giant ginormous check, you know, I may or may not take it, but I want to be here for the rest of my life so to speak you know like I'm all in so I don't need to worry about those kinds of things and I think you mentioned at the beginning you've got the three things that are really important is if you're doing what you love with people that you love you're making a significant difference to the planet um why would you and you've got time still to pursue other passions why would you actually want to exit exactly yeah build something with value that'll keep continuing to add value you don't have to get rid of it (laughs) Well, tell me, what do you do outside of work? What are your passions outside of work? And, and do you find time to do those these days? So it's been a little challenging because coming out of COVID, we've just been gangbusters and just go, 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 go. Yep. Uh, I love riding uh, my bike. I like exercising, uh, although you can't really tell right now. Uh, no, but like I like playing the piano, um, ukulele. I, um, I'm just passionate about life i guess and just like people you know i like I like dancing i like singing i like karaoke there's so many things that i like to do um you know mainly i love building businesses too <laughs> so what's been your 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 number one challenge in the business and how did you overcome it well i wouldn't say we overcame it yet but one of the biggest challenges in um in any business, but in in this business has been um, just, um, I'd say capital, raising enough capital. Uh, When you have something that's brand new, that's never been done, there's a lot of R&D, there's a lot of expenses, a lot of different things that you got to work on. So that was that, you know, that's been a challenge, um, fundraising potentially, but we've we've overcome those just really just meeting more people and working hard. I'd say another challenge for the business or, or for me personally. What would Either you or, as, as both a business owner, but also for the business. Yeah, I mean, you know, they always talk about, oh, life balance. Mm-hmm. Like that's a fallacy. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's, if you're going to, you you hear it a lot, but if you're going to build a business and you're going you're gonna to put it out there, things are going to get out of balance and you're just going to have to work to get them, you know, they're going to go, they're going to go, this way then you got to adjust them that way so i think that's the biggest challenge or the the thing that people have to realize if they're going to go into business this is not made for everyone you have to have i tell people you got to have really big coconuts for this game (laughs) so so what do you do when you find yourself out of balance well i'm I'm with you i don't believe that actually it's a balance as in it, it comes down to if you're doing what you love it doesn't really matter but that said you've got to be doing things that you love in all areas of your life so if you yeah. catch yourself and realize that maybe things aren't quite going the way that you would hope they would do what do you do then yeah you just um you write it down you're like okay i need to do this and, and you start scheduling what those little baby steps are going to be 
and just start, you know? So those are some of the things that I'm, you know, I'm working on personally, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to get our workouts in in the morning. We're going to, you know, put the phone away X amount of time, or you, you just have to really draw a line and, and stay, stay, stick with it as best you can. You're never going to, nothing's perfect. You're yeah. never going to, you know, whatever. But I think writing it down for me is, is helped to just get back on track. Right. So Absolutely. perfect. Yeah. And um, from a thing that you're most proud of in the current business, what is it? Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I would say it's, it's this tap here. Yep. So proud because it took me over three years to get this made. Uh, this used to be made out of plastic. And yeah. now this little tap here is not plastic. It's made out of a ocean safe, um, fully compostable, biodegradable um, material, corn material. Oh, yeah. This makes us full zero waste. So we could grind this up. We could bury this in the backyard. Yeah. If it ends up in the ocean or, you know, this coconut is, is yard waste. So we can literally use all of this again and grind it down and make other products. So, I'm very proud that we got our patent on this and it was really difficult. Like the, the tap and the cap has been just, this was a challenge <laughs> to get something that's not plastic. Yep. And this is, this is amazing. It performs like that. We, we found some partners called beyond green in California and they helped us get this, make this real. So this was a dream. And I'm, so this is, ex I'm extremely proud of this. And, uh, also the the tapomatic machine that we're building. I, mean, I know that sounds that sounds so exciting. I'm I'm really thrilled by that. Yeah. Flow through, and then we make them real, and I'm like, oh my god, you know. So that's that's it. You know, that's what it's all about. So yeah, fantastic. Hey, for mm -hmm. the listeners listening in, they're generally business owners themselves. They they may have feel like they're hitting the ceiling or coming up against some challenges. What are the three sort of top tips that you would give them for mm -hmm. having a better business and a better life, for that matter? Well, um, not taking anything too seriously. Um, I say every setback is a setup for a comeback. Yeah. So that's my big thing is like, uh, even failure is not a person and it, it's just a moment and you can change that moment yeah. and, and just keep going. Don't stop. Keep going. Don't give up. Just, uh, you know what is it? Uh, like I said, anything, um, anything worth stressing over is not worth it at all. <laughs> I just really don't, you know, you just got to keep things in perspective. Life is short anyways. None of us are getting out of here alive. Some of us haven't with all this pandemic stuff and, and just all the things going on, you know, like, I think that's what I'm so passionate about just spreading some happiness, some joy, some cocoa love, some, something that, you know what, <laughs> I love this business because it's like, I tell my team sometimes, cause we get stressed. I said, look guys, it's just coconuts, <laughs> no reason, right? It's just coconuts. Like, let's just keep it in perspective, keep it in check. So that's it. You got to laugh and you got to have fun is whatever you can do to, to keep going on. To keep on. That's, that's what I try to do. <laughs> Have you got any favorite, you know, um, books or podcasts, TED Talks that you highly recommend? So lately, I haven't been consuming much of anything. I've just been going, going, going. But I've read uh, Napoleon Hill, uh, Think and Grow Rich a lot. Yep. Uh, some of the staples. I have a hard time reading. Uh, true story. I, If I read a physical book for more than 15, 20 minutes, I kind of zone out and I just I'll even almost fall asleep. But um, I try to listen to audio books or different things. I, I got through the whole um, Shoe Dog book recently, which is the Phil Knight um, Nike story. Oh, yeah. Good book. Inspirational. Good. Yeah. Yeah, very Good. inspirational. I mean, you know, to each his own, I kind of feel like I'm making a book. I have a really <laughs> story to, to tell in this whole process of things that I've done and you know, adventures that I've been on, all the, all the bad things that have happened to me in my life are going to be an amazing story because we've overcome them. 
Yeah, I completely agree. I look forward to reading that book. What about, this is me, so using my little EOS hat, what's your favourite EOS tool? EOS tool? Mm -hmm. uh, my favourite EOS tool. I would say um, my favourite one that we sometimes miss is our level 10s. Okay. Our L10. That tool is just really good to keep everything you know, on track or to realize that you're off track. Yeah. That's one of my favorites that we do weekly, you know? Yeah, I've seen it makes such a big difference to to client it's meetings. Yeah, even even from the beginning, it can actually change your business, I think. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is an international podcast, although it's mostly based in New Zealand and Australia. But um, if somebody wanted to get in contact with you and find out more information or ask you a question, how would they get hold of you? So you can, uh, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, um, Coco Vinny, C-O-C-O-V-I-N-N-Y, yep. uh, as well as CocoTaps.com. I'm pretty easy to get a hold of. If you just Google Coco Vinny, I can, you can catch me pretty easily. I'm pretty, I'm pretty active, responsive. You are wonderful. In fact, the reason that we got introduced was through Shelley, having um, talked to her earlier on the week, and she said, oh, you know, you must speak to Coco Vinny. I think I sent you a LinkedIn message, and you came back almost immediately, which was fantastic. So <laughs> thank you for that. Really appreciate it. Yeah, um, in terms you. of just, just finishing off, just paint for me the picture. What, what's this going to look like in another three years' time when you've done your, uh, your 10 years? <laughs> well, so... Um, the most exciting thing is that we're going to have these beautiful agritourism resorts in Puerto Rico, Hawaii, Costa Rica, where people can come, kick their feet off, have a coconut, get tapped in, you know, tap into nature, tap into life, the simple kind of life. So um, we're going to we're going to allow people to sponsor a tree with us. So every tree that we plant is going to sequester 80 pounds of carbon out of the air. So over 25 years, each tree will uh, sequester one metric ton of carbon out of the air. So it's a major impactful project for us. So we're going to be in our cocoa bungalow, you know, spreading the cocoa love, all the, all the restaurants, resorts, cruise ships, theme parks, everybody's going to get involved. And we're all going to help make this world a better place by building soil, creating healthy food, air, and water. So that's the dream. The cocoa dream is real simple. Excellent. I can't wait to come and be part of it. Hey, look, Coco, it's been absolutely delightful to finally get to meet you after following you all these years. And thank you for your time. Really, really appreciate it. Um, keep up the great work. And I look forward to the day that over this side of the world, we also get our, our own Coco Taps. <laughs> thank you, locked in. I'm going to come and visit. I swear I will. And, oh, please. Uh, We'd love you to. Yeah. <laughs> hi to Ellie there, on the, uh, the little elephant in the room. <laughs> <laughs> need to come and say hi to Ellie, absolutely. Hey, look, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. We'll, we'll talk again soon. Take care. Thank you. Cheers.